Okay. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 18, starting at verse 1. 1 through 10. At the same time came the disciples unto Yeshua, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yeshua called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Truly I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is great in the kingdom of heaven. And who shall receive one such little child in my name receives me. <clears throat> but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck, that he was drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must need be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offenses comes. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into the halt and maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into the everlasting fire. If thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into the life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven the angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. <clears throat> in the 60s, the boxing world welcomed a relative newcomer in the heavyweight ranks. With a matter of months, within a matter of months, he was has defeated the champion twice, and was now the heavyweight champion of the world. He held the, held the title for a long time. There was a none who could really match up with him. He was known for being arrogant, and eventually would pronounce himself the greatest boxer who had ever lived. His name was Cassius K, but we grew up to know him as Muhammad Ali. It is not wrong to strive to be the greatest. Sports teams want to be the champions in their sport. Individuals involved in sports like Muhammad Ali want to be the champion in their individual sports. The issue with desiring to be the greatest is that it is very easy for pride to become part of our lives. This happened to the apostles and it could easily happen to us. Over the period of eight days, Yeshua had told the disciples that he was to travel to Jerusalem where he would be killed. Twice during this time, Yeshua rebuked Peter for his pride. He didn't want Yeshua to go to the, the way of the stake. He was afraid of what would happen to him. Would they impale him next? What would Yeshua's death mean to the establishment of a new kingdom here on earth? It seemed obvious that if the king were dead, so would that dream. The positions of prominence that he and the other disciples would be gone. When Yeshua said to Peter, get behind me, Satan, he was rebuking Peter for trying to block the plan of Yahweh. The words of Isaiah come to mind in Isaiah 55 verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, declares Yahweh. Then Yeshua took Peter, James, and John with him, and as they ascended Mount Horeb, they witnessed his transfiguration, where Peter wanted to build three shelters, supposedly for Yeshua, Moses, and Elijah. Mark 9, verse 1 through 10. And he said unto him, Truly I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of Yahweh come with power. And after six days, Yeshua takes with him Peter and James and John, leads them up into the high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His raiment became shining, exceedingly white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias and Moses, 
and they were talking with Yeshua. Peter answered and said unto Yeshua, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid, and there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked around about, they saw no man anymore, save Yeshua only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that, that they should tell no man what things they had seen, till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another, what the rising of the, from the dead should mean. The disciples, in their pride, would take some offense and see in Yeshua's show what appeared to be a uh, preference to Peter, James, and John. They, uh, hey, they had always thought that Yeshua was going to set up a physical kingdom, and that they would have prominent positions in the new kingdom. But the question on their mind was, which one of them was the greatest? Finally, the apostles just asked, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? Matthew 18, verse 1. Yeshua responds to the question in a strange way, or what was for them a strange way. Yeshua directs their attention to a child and tells them that if they want to be great in his kingdom, they must become like little children. You see this in Matthew 18, verse 2, 3, and 4. Children during Yeshua's time were seen as insignificant and unimportant. This was not true of our Savior. The picture being painted for us here is Yeshua taking the children by the hand and lifting them up as if they were part of their family. Yeshua was establishing that the disciples need to be childlike in their faith, not childish in their behavior. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, 6, and 7. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another, because Yahweh opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under Yahweh's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. It is from children that we can learn some of the basic lessons of life. Children are very basic. They eat, sleep, party, and cry when one of them is out of sync. Little children are not afraid to be dependent on adults and have no problem acknowledging this. It is this difference, it is this dependence that leads children to trust. Children cannot provide their own food, they cannot provide for clothing or shelter, but they never doubt that they will receive that clothing, food, and shelter, at least not as little children. They just know it will be there. I have yet to see one or two year old kiss his mother and father goodbye and tell them that he was off to work. Yeshua asked the question of people earlier in Matthew, Matthew 6, verse 31, 2 and 3. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the kind of faith Yeshua was expecting of the disciples. Yeshua expects us to be people of faith. He expects us to exercise our faith in our daily lives, just as an infant exercises their faith in parents. Children have a number of qualities that we need to express if we are going to ex exercise Messiah-like faith, such as dependency, fear when separated, their sense of wonder, their ability to trust, their excitement to learn, and their ability for to forgive. 
So let's look at dependency. Children have no problem being dependent on parents. Ask the child and they will tell you that dad can do everything. Children do not want to be left alone. They feel secure when their parents are around. If they don't see their parents, many times they will cry. Dependence is natural to a child. They know they can't face life on their own. They come and ask for a drink of milk or for a cookie because they know they can't get it on their own. They are all right with that because they know their parents can get it. Yahweh wants us to have the same kind of dependent attitude in regards to him. Yeshua told us to seek the kingdom of heaven and the things that we need will be added to you. Matthew 7, <laughs> verses 7 and 8. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to one who knocks, the door will be opened. We can learn to be dependent on him. We also must have fear when separated. Children don't like to be separated from their parents. They may play hide and seek for a while, but if they sense that they have lost their parents, they will get scared and cry. We should not be, we should not like to be separated from our spiritual father as well. Yeshua said in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, verse three and four, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. We often associate these verses with comfort during times of death, but that is not what they were speaking of. Yeshua was telling people what their attitude should be like if they separate themselves from their belief, from their believers walk. It should create an attitude of sorrow that can only be relieved by getting back into a right relationship with Yahweh. Follow the Torah. Like children, we should not like being separated from our Heavenly Father and should cry out to be held in his comforting arms once again. Children have their sense of wonder. I remember taking my nephew Luke to the state park down the road. As a little boy at the state park, he was fascinated by all the different noises he heard on the walking trails. He got a cup of his ear and said, can you hear that? Can you hear that? It doesn't take much to impress a kid. It takes much more for us to be impressed by Yahweh though, doesn't it? Psalms 8 verse 9, Yahweh our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And then Psalms 19 verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of Yahweh and the firmament shows his handiwork. There's a story of an autistic student. He was looking at snow falling on the window of the school. And he noticed that he was, and the teacher noticed that he was trying to count the snowflakes. There was just too many. Then the teacher said, there are a lot of, a lot of them, probably millions, and his eye grew big. Then the teacher said, what's really amazing is that no two snowflakes are alike. He was so happy, he gave the teacher a big hug, and that was something he never did. How awestruck are you at the glory of Yahweh? Sometimes we expect big things from Yahweh to move us. There's nothing wrong with that. However, let's learn from children how to be awestruck at a snowflake or the sounds in a park. Children have an amazing ability to trust. My little nieces and nephews were fearless and they would stand on the arm of a couch and jump. No matter whether you were ready or not, they just believed that you would always be ready. Children have an immense amount of courage and will put that courage to the test by trusting us. They only have that courage because they have absolute trust in someone watching over them. I wonder 
how much we really trust Yahweh. Hebrews 13, verse 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Elsa Einstein, the wife of Albert Einstein, said this about trust. I don't understand my husband's theory of relativity, but I know my husband, and I know he can be trusted. Can you say the same thing about your relationship with Yahweh? Do you know he can be trusted? Children have a natural interest to learn. Have you ever tried to figure out the favorite question of a two-year-old child? It's just one word. Why? Children like to ask, why? Why will a round peg not fit into a square hole? Why can a plane fly but I can't? How is your interest in learning about the things of Yahweh? Most people stay clear of books of the Bible like Revelation and some of the books of the Old Testament. They're too difficult to understand, they say. Do you stretch your mind and allow yourselves to think of how good the kingdom of heaven is going to be? Do you think about the cost of your salvation? The things that come to your mind can show you how much Yahweh loves you and desires a relationship with you. Do you think about Yahweh's creation? You, much of the undersea world has not yet been explored. We're discovering new galaxies every day. Scientific discoveries about our bodies are helping us find cures and controls for diseases like cancer, diabetes, and heart issues, MS and MD. The more we find out about our body, the more we stand in awe of its creator. And children have an amazing ability to forgive. Children can be angry with you at one moment and then hugging you the next. This is just in their nature to let go. Let me ask you a question. How many children do you know who have ulcers due to stress? There are some hurts that for children are hard to let go of, but for everyday life, they can forgive easily. Yeshua wants to forgive us, and he will if we let him. He said it in Hebrews 8 verse 12, For I will forgive their wickedness, and will remember their sins no more. In case you don't know, wickedness is not following the Torah, and righteousness is following the Torah. Is it any wonder that Yahweh or Yeshua would use a child to teach the adult disciples? There's so much we can learn from them. The disciples, the disciples though, still didn't get it. They tried to keep the children from coming to Yeshua. Yeshua's response was a bit overkill. He said in Matthew 18, 6, But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck and that he was drowned in the depth of the sea. This millstone was no small thing. They were used in mills to grind all kinds of grain of the community. They were huge. It would take several men to work with one so that to tie it around your neck and throw you into the sea was a big deal. Yeshua loved children and protected them. You can imagine what he thinks of Planned Parenthood and those people that have no problem snuffing out an innocent life. Yeshua loves children and he protects them. May Yahweh bless you. 
with eyes of wonder and strength to stand for life in his word. Yeah, we bless.